Hey everybody, Pastor Dustin with another installment for TeamNerdChurch.com. Uh, we're continuing on with the same deck. I have been kind of messing around with the sideboard a little bit, and I thought that maybe Borderland Marauders might be an okay sideboard inclusion for all of the decks that have a lot of creature kill, because I often find myself in a position with those decks where I just need one more creature because I've got a whole bunch of enchantments, like a Dragon Mantle or a Thunderous Smite or something like that, or just to break through the line on the board, and all it needs is a creature. So I thought maybe putting some just basic creatures in there uh, might be good. It's nothing spectacular, but it's something to continue to push through damage. Uh, because as you can see, these lightning strikes and stoke the flames are never useless, but if my opponent is at like 10, then I would be much happier to draw a Borderland Marauder, which is just a, a lightning strike on a stick, than just the regular old lightning strike. So we're going to try it like this. Um, I don't know what uh, Outp is playing, but we'll find out. Let's start off with a 13, and I am on the draw. Uh, that's a fine hand. I've got two lands, which is <clears throat> absolutely fine. I've got two spells. I'm going to start off with the Swift Spear, because then I can do the break through the line. And then that'll get me in for two. Whereas if I play the uh, Fire Drinker, then I'd only get in for two on the second turn, but I would miss that first turn damage. He's got a favorite Hoplite. Okay. Well, that takes a little bit of the fun out of my Swift Spear. So, let's see. I suppose I probably still play the Swift Spear in case next turn I just want to play the Break Through the Line. So we'll get that out there. And pass the turn. At this point, I'd like to just start getting more land so I can get myself up to my 3-drop and my Stoke. All right, is he going to pants up his hoplite? Yep. All right, so the hoplite gets pants. And I'm going to get whacked for three. Ouch. Okay, well, I will eventually be able to, to get a stoke off, but by then it's going to be too late. So I need to race him, which is going to be awfully difficult if I don't draw some more land. So, we're just going to go with the Stoke here. Yeah, I think so. Yeah, I'll go with the Stoke to make that a 2-3. I attack because I'm not going to block with it. Okay, so as far as the sideboard goes, um, bringing a little bit of creature kill, 2 damage would have gone a long way. Well, actually. Oops. I showed him the stoke. <laughs> okay. But not when I don't have two mana up. So it's good on the play against his deck, but it might be something that I am able to rely less on on the draw. I still don't know that I would take it out on the draw, but it's just not something that would be quite as good. All right. So he's about to be up to six cards with the sword deal pop. See if I draw land and start getting Rabble Master going. That might be my path to victory. I do have a couple of stokes for the late game. The late game is rapidly approaching. If I don't get a land, uh, I suppose that I just fire drinker through. It's probably my best plan to develop my board a little bit. Hey, there's my land. Okay. So. Hmm. Do I attack with the Swift Spear just to push one more point of damage? Now, if I'm if I'm going to use the Swift Spear, it's probably just a chump block of four or five. So we'll get the Rabble Master out. We'll send the Goblin to its death. If I had one more thing out, I'd be able to stoke here. And then pass the turn. Can hold off four damage here, unless he gives it flying, in which case it's a lot faster clock. All right, he wants the mana for something. I think his life total is high enough to where he'd be able to aggressively use these flooded strands and not have to wait till he actually needs them. So three mana buys him what? Really? Huh. Okay. Um. Yeah, he's going to give it flying, which is bad for me. 
All right, so he can bounce that a, a bunch if he wants to. So, let's see. He attacks with both. No, just the one. Okay, so he's making me use my mana for breakthrough line. But I keep the swift spear. All right, there's, there's a pretty minimal chance that I come away with this one. It's only a 4-4 at the moment, so he's probably holding a God's Willing. It might be my best interest to just assume that he was not holding that God's Willing. Hmm. Could use that extra mountain to be able to get the Flame Speaker through. The thing is, if he has anything, he's going to get me next turn. So I have to play to my outs here. So I'm going to start combat. Get myself a token. Play Stoke. Tapping these. Drawing the arrow over here. If he has the gods willing, I am almost assuredly dead. is blue for the Stubborn Denial. Okay. Well, he has Ferocious. So that's going to be a game two. So that's uh, two recordings in a row now where I've lost the first game, so this is new for me. Okay. Oh, he left the game. I don't even get a game two. Ah, garbage. Oh well. Well, we'll, uh, we'll come up with a different matchup here. Okay, so I've got another opponent here. Uh, I've only got the one land. I do have two plays for it, but I don't want to bank on it. This is better. I've got two, and I'll keep this. So I am playing Vinny from what appears to be some country in Western Europe. I don't know what that flag is. Okay, anyway. Uh, he won the die roll, so he will be going first. I get Seder into Eidolon into possibly Hammer or Thunder Smite, just depending on how empty his board is. I don't think I did, but I'll take it. Might send it over his way. It's another one of these. Oh, uh, <laughs> well, maybe I'll get the match in against this deck to see if I'm weak to it. Okay. So... Could attack in to try to get his creature off the board. He probably won't do anything about it. Okay, he doesn't. There we go. So that works. And then I will get my Eidolon out, which will at least make all of his things that target his stuff. Well, pretty much everything in his deck will make him take two. And then if he starts tapping out on me, I'll be able to get a Thunder Smite shot in that he didn't expect. These are both decks that just like to race past each other. All right, double white for Seeker of the Way. All right, so he takes two off of that. And then he can't attack in with his favorite hoplite. If he would have played that post-combat, I uh, would not have blocked. Okay. What do we get here? Hmm. Well, I can't really attack in profitably Unless it's with a fire drinker, but I do want to hold that back so I get my devotion here. I can get a flame speaker thunder smite shot in here that's pretty ugly. Or I could set it up with hammer and then make it even bigger. So I think I'm going to try, try to play some long game here and start with the hammer. Uh, next turn, if he attacks me, then I get the Flame Speaker Surprise, which will probably end up getting me another land. We'll see what he wants to do. And I'm not that scared of the Seeker. Man, he's got all the creatures and nowhere to go with it. He is. Oh, I should have taken damage off my own hammer. Yep. Um. He just keeps shocking himself, which is fine by me, because it makes the flame speaker better and better. Okay, so I've got 
three mana, flame speaker, and a might. Now the flame speaker is not going to get the job done, unfortunately. I will just play it out just to, to get it on the board. And ends my turn. If he has got banishing light, I'm going to be a little, a little upset about it. But other than that, I think I just win next turn. Because I've got probably probably not win outright, although maybe one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, uh, eight, nine. So I would be swinging in with a 10-3 uh, double striker, which is pretty good. Okay, so we get the mana to do whatever we want. Yeah, I don't know what he has for two white. Um, now he could have, um, what do you call it? Devouring Light, I believe, has uh, the ability to make me sack an attacking creature. And it costs three, but you can use creatures for it. Alright, so I will send everybody. Let's see if he has it. He's got Devouring Light. I think I'm still in the game. Probably not a favorite. And if he doesn't, then I just win. Okay, right now he's blocking it with just a seeker. So I get two through to get him to 12. This, this is still getting him for 18. Okay, that's still getting him for seven, well, 16. Uh-oh. Tapping creatures. Ephemeral shields. Yeah, still don't care. Yeah, I was, um... Trample and double strike. on a red-white uh, deck that was using ephemeral shields and that sort of thing to protect all of the really quality three drops like Rabble Master. And I started to think about Flame Speaker. I win four life, is it? Well, all right, let's look at this. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So 10, three, double strike. 20 damage. So he absorbs 4 and gains 4. So that's still 12 total. Um, and 14. And he was at 14, right? Yeah, he was exactly at 14. Okay, so now we'll see if we can get our game two. And for that, I'm going to want the Searing Bloods. Uh, Harness by Force could do some work here. And then maybe a Faded Conflagration. Maybe. Take out a Hammer. Yeah, I'll do that because a couple of things can get that big after I've let them go. So we'll take out the Fire Drinkers and the Hammer of Perforos and try to run it through like that. <clears throat> okay, game two. We get two land. That's perfect. Uh, don't get any creature kill, which is not perfect. He starts off on a creature. Okay. We could be in trouble here. Whenever you whenever you cast a spell. Okay, so if I want to dragon mantle his guy just to get the extra land, I can. But I'm not sure that's correct, as I do have the lightning strike coming up next. Okay, we'll just let it be his turn. Okay, if he targets it, then that's going to get it up to a four already, which is going to be trouble. 
So if he just plays a creature, I'll be pretty happy about it. Is he stuck on one? Yeah, he's stuck on one. Okay. So the question becomes, do I strike one? Or do I just hold up? I think I just hold up and wait for him to target something so I can get the, uh, the two for one. That seems correct. Okay, there's the second one, so he managed to draw in. Now the ending phase? Okay. So I can take a couple of turns of two damage. But I don't want to discard. So I'm going to walk smack dab into the middle of a protection spell. Rather than lose one of my cards. Of course, I could have Swift Spear Dragon Mantled. That's a possibility. Yep. Walked right into it. That's probably what I should have done, is try to put a little bit of my own pressure on with those two. All right, note taken. Okay. Okay, my opponent's turn. So if I would have done that, that does leave him, does leave me tapped out and gives him the ability to do something. But at least it's not a two for one on my part, and I've got a little something to push back with. I suppose it also could have been correct to play the idol on just to, to make him have a little bit of pain for pumping his guys up. I'm taking three per turn. Okay, so he is going to continue to hold. There we go, there's the third land. I think I flame speaker here. That seems correct, just try to jam that through. All right, sounds good to me. I will not try to kill his stuff, I will just try to kill him. I didn't see anything that would be direct removal to my flame speaker. And so if I can get an enchantment for it, then we're doing pretty well. I can Dragon Mantle. All right, he's gonna ordeal up. So now he's got a three, four flyer. I don't have anything to kill it with at the moment. The other nice thing about the flame speaker is that it is harder for him to interact with it attacking. All right. What do I get? I got a breakthrough line. Okay, well, at the moment, I'm more concerned about just attacking with it, so I don't need to break it through. Here's a stoke. Uh, unfortunately, I don't really have enough mana to do the stoking at the moment. I've got three up. So I will attack through. Hopefully he doesn't block and make me spend my mana. Hmm. Let's see. If I just pump all of it in there, making the 3-3, three, three, then I get him for 6. Gets him down to 14. He gets another whack at me. And then the turn after that, I'd be able to pump for 4, which would get 10, which would not kill him. Well, it would have a stoke. Well, the stoke's no longer viable. Yeah, I'm having a hard time getting out of this one. The problem is all my outs cost mana. <laughs> and so if I flip one of them, I'm not going to be able to play it. So I think that I just have to push damage now and hope that I draw on my next step something to be able to deal with this hoplite. I have not played a lot of this deck online. It's uh, something that had fallen out of popularity for a while. Okay. So...
So he gets that up to a 2-3. I still get 3 damage through, and I flip one card. And that one card is a mountain. I believe I've already played a mountain. Got up there. Okay, I drew one card. Clear attackers. No, I have not played a mountain. Okay. So I believe this is a correct rules ruling. Um, this has pro red, so this deals what would have been lethal, and then the trample goes through for the rest of it. If that's not correct, let me know in the comments. While he's thinking about that, I'll pause for you. Okay, so we'll go to second. Play out a mountain and get a creature down with it. We'll pass turn. So he's got four, five, six coming at me. Which means that he's basically got me on a two turn clock. I don't know if chumping with my swift spear actually changes that clock or not. Just depending on what he does with that hoplite. If he didn't have anything, which would be pretty hard to believe since he does have four cards in hand. We're about to see one of them. Ordeal. Oh, he's got life gain too. That makes a, a race next to impossible. Okay. Well, I, I can chump block something that costs five and have it change the clock a fair bit. So maybe I do that. Let's see, or if I let it through... Stand a better chance of being able to stoke the other hoplite. Uh, now he's got a beast form. Okay. So this changes conversations about jumping a fair bit. So he's getting me for six. He'll get me for six again next turn. I'm having a hard time seeing how I get out of this one. Because I, I think I'm out of outs. Seven. All right. Well, I guess it doesn't really matter that much. And then he gains up to twenty-seven. Hmm. Looks like we're going to game three. All right. Is there anything in my sideboard that I need to be playing against him? Let's see, Scouring Sands doesn't do a whole lot just because everybody's got two toughness. Yeah, I don't see anything in here that's spectacular. So I think I just have to keep it like that. I am on the play, which makes a pretty big difference in this matchup. Yeah, I get the Swift Spear into holding up a Lightning Strike. Awesome. Okay, he likes his hand too. So we'll go for the Swift Spear Pressure. So next turn, if he has no play, then I get to idle on. Well, maybe maybe I idle on anyway. Okay, so he starts with the tap land, so I get to idle on. I don't foresee anything that punishes me for not holding up the lightning strike this turn. Because even if he has... Uh, you know, creature and then something to put on it that I get to untap and kill whatever that creature is. Okay, so I think I'm firmly in the driver's seat at this point. And then if I get one more land, then I am up to Conflagration, which would be able to clean up anything. Alright, so pretty confident going into whatever it is he's about to do. Ooh, another tap land. Sets him back even further. Okay. All right, we've got favorite hoplite. There we go. So, stoke, nice. Um, I can lightning strike that to push damage. Or, yeah, I think that's correct. I could hold back to try to get a two for one. But he could have two spells to get around my lightning strike, so he could end up getting me on that. So I think this is actually the more conservative route of being aggressive. The best offense is a good defense, right? No, other way around. All right, fine. Okay, so get him for four. Hmm. 
myself for one there. Still got to take one more from the Swift Spear because I played the Lightning Strike. All right, there we go. So he's at 13. I do have eight points of burn in my hand. So he's at a virtual five. So if I swing through, I can get him for four with the creatures on top of the Stoke the Flames. So it might be time to just attempt to burn him out if I draw another land. So he gets the Temple of Enlightenment. Yeah. All right, so he gets the Hero of Aroas, which isn't going to do too much. I got a Thunder Smite, which I can't play out yet. Yeah, that appears to be the case. Okay. So what do I do? I can stoke his guy and then swing through. That appears to be the most appropriate thing to do, right? I prefer it to be a faded conflagration, but it can't be. So get rid of that and then just get him for two. Okay, so I've got him down to nine. If I can get a turn without any creatures, then I can close this game out with a Thunder Smite. He's getting a pretty bad draw here without a single basic. Alright, I've got to break through the line in case he does have creatures. So we're just going to Thunder Smite here. Put on the Swift Spear. I think that's the less valuable of the creatures. your creature. Um, also, if you are wondering why this area over here is covered up, it's because of some profanity from my opponent that I was not willing to post online. So that's why you can't see all the conversation over here. So I managed to win in game three versus blue-white. Uh, he did have kind of a, a subpar draw, but I had a lot of gas here that could have dealt with a better one, I think. So it seems like uh, kind of a coin toss here in this video where you got to see me lose uh, game one on that first one and then win 2-1 on the match. So uh, maybe a little uh, bit more to look at with this matchup. But anyway, I hope that you enjoyed this one. Uh, I'm going to have a vintage service on after this. And I will see you guys later. This has been Pastor Destin recording for TeamNerdChurch.com. Check out the site.